Why is the time now to sit down and tell the story in your own words, Elizabeth Thomas? I'm tired of hiding. I wish you could see yourself the way I see you, Beth. The search for 15-year-old Elizabeth Thomas continues. Let's find this bastard. I mean, my, my mouth dropped so many different times watching that young actress um, play you, Elizabeth Thomas. But first, I want to ask Elizabeth Smart, what led you to want to executive produce Elizabeth Thomas's story? I have been the, I feel like the, the recipient of many misportrayals myself. And it's always been important to me that if this is something that another survivor wants to portray or wants to share their story, if there's any way that I can help them and allow them to portray their story in a way that's going to be true to them with something that they're involved in, something that they have say, like, this is wrong. I don't like that. I would never say that this isn't true or this is me. This is what happened. Then I want to give that to them because they should have every chance of it being exactly how they feel, what their experience was. It's so important to have their involvement. And I like, it's like a, I don't know, it's like, it's very personal for me to be able to try to be involved in that process. And then of course with Lifetime, you know, I trusted Lifetime with my own story. And I'm sure probably Elizabeth Thomas feels the same way when she saw her movie. When I saw my movie, I was like, this is the best, worst movie I have ever seen. I never want to watch it again, but it is so accurate, it hurts. If I'm not home by nine tonight, call the police. Tad Cummins left this note for his wife. We're already over 24 hours into a 48 hour window. The Lifetime movie um, is followed by this documentary special, Beyond the Headlines, The Elizabeth Thomas Story with Elizabeth Smart. Why is the time now to sit down and tell the story in your own words, Elizabeth Thomas? I'm tired of hiding. It's just like the fear of the community bashing me. And, you know, they've They've done it for so long and I just kind of like hit in my own little corner and I'm tired of letting those people get to me. And I want other people to see that I'm not scared of them. Was there trepidation at all about showcasing such a traumatizing event in your life to the entire world? It was kind of hard for me, but I know that it's going to be a, a good outcome. I want other people to be able to you know, feel comfortable if they also went through the same, same thing to be able to look I guess at my story and kind of have the confidence to come forward. Elizabeth Smart, what do you admire most about Elizabeth Thomas and her story, which is so inspiring? For her to have been through everything that she's been through and still to be so focused on helping others, um, so kind, such a compassionate person. Um, I've had the opportunity to, you know, meet her in person and have conversations with her and she is just one of the kindest, most lovely people you could ever hope to meet. And she just has this, this pure heart inside of her that even though, you know, people have been awful to her, she still wants to be there for her community. She still wants to be there to make a difference. And I just think that is just one of the most amazing things about her. We have a new student in the class. Please welcome Elizabeth Thomas. We subpoenaed their cell phone records, but they've both been offline since yesterday. Tracking them isn't going to be easy. How much involvement did the two of you have on this specific project when it came to producing and making sure the story aligned? How much interaction did you have, Elizabeth Smart and then Elizabeth Thomas? How much interaction involved? I mean, I feel like I always personally deferred to Elizabeth Thomas. I mean, whenever like I was speaking to production or anything, I was just always like, is Elizabeth Thomas happy? If she's happy, I'm happy. I don't think I've had en as much involvement as she has, um, Elizabeth Smart, obviously, but it, it was kind of fun being able to like see the insides of like production and, you know, be able to like watch her, you know, show me the ropes, if that makes sense. Um, <laughs> and, you know, just watch like the crew interact and everything. Has she inspired you in that way too, to champion the voiceless once you get your voice all the way underneath you? Is this something that you'd be interested in? 
helping others in this light? She's inspired me in lots of ways. Um, and just like the way she holds herself is something that I look up to. Um, and you know, she, she has been through a lot, but it's just seeing her on the other side of it, like years later and knowing that I can be in that same place and look forward to, you know, a life of no fear. I knew life's right out there. It's just waiting for us. Please just go to the police. If both of you could say one thing now to Tad Cummins as he sits in prison, what would it be, if anything? I hope he rots and dies in there. I mean, I'd second what she said, but I'd also say you did not break her. You did not destroy her. She is stronger than you ever thought she was. And, you know, I, I'm not scared. I'm not, nothing he can do is going to hurt me anymore. How has life changed for you now, Elizabeth? Are you still facing any bullying or if, if the word is backlash from this event? Yes, I'm still facing backlash. Um, with the, you know, little snippets of like the movie premiere, like there was a lot of backlash in this community. Um, but we, I don't even, I don't look at the comments, you know, I don't, if it doesn't have to do with helping other people or survivors, I don't, I don't try to look at them. I don't try to give them, you know, any power. How has this event made you even stronger? I, I'm hearing hints of it, but I just want to ask you that, that question outright. I used to be scared going to stores. Um, I used to, you know, not want to leave my house, close the blinds, you know, have someone else go grocery shopping for me. And I, I don't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. I, I just walk as if nothing bothers me, or at least I try to. Um, even if it does, I try not to let other people know about it. What is your message to the parents and the family and friends that um, may be trying to support people who are going through what you went through and may one day go through what you went through. Is there any advice? Are there any signs to look out for? Is there anything you just kind of want to reassure them with or, or back them with? Just like giving victims normalcy. Um, not, you know, just continuing on like nothing happened. It's just they need that safe place, safe place to be able to go back to and, you know, not have fear of someone constantly trying to understand their situation and constantly remind them of it every day and they need those strong people in their life to be there for them. That was so well said and I would just add to that um, as, as parents who uh, hopefully never experience you know what Elizabeth experienced what I've experienced um, but to make sure that they start young having these difficult conversations um, obviously it doesn't need to be nitty gritty straight out of the gate you know your child the best. You know what they can handle better than anyone else. So begin having these conversations age appropriately. Don't just have it once. I mean, have it have it consistently. Have it so much. I mean, my kids, when I look at them and I start talking to them, they like roll their eyes and they're like, oh, mom. And I'm like, do you know why? Do you know why I'm talking to you like this? And they're like, oh, yes. It's because you want us to be safe. And I'm like, yes, I want you to be safe. <laughs> um, but so having these conversations and continually having them um, and also letting them know, because I mean, I'm, I'm certainly not a perfect parent and like I mess up and like I make mistakes, but like helping them to understand that if something does happen, um, that they can come to you. And it's really, really scary coming to a parent if something has happened. I mean, I think one of the things that uh, Elizabeth Thomas's movie just displays so beautifully is the grooming process and how this monster just groomed her so much that she felt like she was that it somehow was still partly her fault even though like watching it myself like it just made me want to throw up because I was like she was a child she was a child this was a, a like an old man like no, there was nothing okay about this. Um, and so helping your child to understand that like they're, they can come to you and they can like invoke their bubble of safety or their cone of safety where they can tell you anything and you will not emotionally react. You won't like scream at them or yell at them 
Um, we had a little incident just a few days ago with, with my daughter. And I mean, nothing, nothing severe or anything like that, but she didn't want to tell me the truth. But once I told her, I said, you know, you know, I will not get mad at you. I will not, you know, be upset. I will not scream. I like, I won't do any of these things, but I need you to tell me the truth. And once she knew that I wasn't going to be mad at her or I wasn't going to overreact, then she was willing to tell me the truth. And after that, I'm actually really glad that came up because now it's led to my husband and I both having conversations with her about, you know, if anything ever happens and you're scared to tell us, that's when you really need to tell us. And you can just say straight at the beginning, like, mom, you can't get upset. Dad, you can't get upset. And I was like, you know, sometimes there might be natural consequences, but you can always start off by that. And I promise I will not get upset. And you can tell me anything you want. And so I just think that that communication, that ongoing communication before Hopefully nothing ever happens before anything ever happens, but also if something does happen, knowing that they can tell you without having like a huge reaction, I think is also very important for parents to try to instill in their children. This was a very eye-opening interview and the movie, ser Ugh, ma'am, uh, people are gonna learn a lot from that, a lot from your, from your story. And that's not the only story that defines you, Elizabeth Thomas, but thank you for sharing it with us. And Elizabeth Smart, thank you for helping her share it with us. It's my pleasure.